Hello, welcome back to Animated Literacy. This is part seven of the overview and research for the program. In part six, we introduced the gestures and the sounds for the vowel characters for Animated Literacy. In this section, we're going to go th through each of the gestures and sounds for the consonant characters. And we're also going to spend time talking about blending and the importance of introducing blending as soon as you are starting to introduce consonant sounds. So just as a quick review, when we were introducing our vowel sounds in the last session, we talked about how to plug them, each of those sounds, into the context of Are You Sleeping Brother John? So for actress Annie, her sound was A ah for adding, and we formed an addition sign to gesture her sound. And her verse went, Are you adding, are you adding, actress Annie, actress Annie, Annie's bells are saying, Annie's bells are saying, ah, ah, ah. And then for old Joe Crow, we had him rowing his boat home. So we're pulling back on our oars, giving a big groan and going, oh. And so his verse sang, are you rowing, are you rowing, old Joe Crow, old Joe Crow, Joe's cows are saying, Joe's cows are saying, oh, oh, oh. O, O, O. So when you're doing vowels, as in actress Annie, we did bells. In Old Joe Crow, we did cows. It doesn't matter whether it's a cow, a bear, a dinosaur, a door, or whatever it is. Everything just says the sound of the vowel in isolation. But that's going to change now as we're moving into consonants. So here's a quote from How Babies Think that tells us that about seven or eight months, babies begin to babble by producing strings of consonant vowel syllables, as in da, 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 and ba, 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 ba. And they also tell us that babies across cultures babble at first in an identical way. So when babies are first learning to speak and first learning to produce the sounds of language, it doesn't matter what the language is that surrounds them. They all do it in a similar way. And then gradually they change to producing the sounds that are more like those in the language that they hear surrounding them. It's critical to look at the difference between how babies produce consonants and vowels. And in the, in the next session, in session eight, I'll give you a simple way to, uh, to teach children how to discriminate between a vowel and a consonant. But here what I want to use is the idea of blending. When children are producing their vowel sounds, they don't blend. They simply produce them one at a time. But when children move to consonants, they don't isolate them. Because most programs now that are used for teaching reading introduce consonants ahead of vowels. When they introduce consonants, they're treating them like babies treat vowels and isolating them. So babies are trained to look at a B and go ba 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 and look at a D and go da 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 and look at a, 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 a H and go and so forth. Babies don't do that. Instead, what babies do from the beginning of their production of consonant sounds is they take a consonant, put a vowel after it, and blend the two together. So one common way to, for babies to babble is baba. -ba. Now if we analyze that, the B in baba -ba represents the onset or the consonants at the front of the word. The A ah represents what we refer to as the rhyme or the vowel plus anything that comes after it. So when you have baba, -ba, you have an onset of ba and you have a rhyme of a. Ah. Now if a baby changes baba -ba to gaga, -ga, they have deleted or taken away the consonant or the onset. They've replaced the b with a g and blended it back together again to produce gaga. -ga. Now if we move from gaga -ga to goo goo, they've taken away the rhyme and they've replaced ah uh, with oo and now they blend it together perfectly to go goo goo and then if they change goo goo to boo boo they've gone back to replacing the consonant or the onset at the beginning from g to b and now they have boo boo so then they go on to produce other utterances like bubba and bb and tt and ta ta each time taking away a sound, replacing it with another sound, and blending the two together. And then finally they stumble into mama, and mom gets all excited, into dada, and dad gets excited, and papa, and, and grandpa gets excited, and nana, and grandma gets excited. And so their babbling starts to represent words. 
Some people have underestimated, and I would say most of us have underestimated the genius of babies and just say, seen things as being cute. But babies are the only ones who can accurately teach us how we should be developing phonological awareness. So we need to study what babies are doing. And I've heard it said, well, we know that they're babbling and we know that they're manipulating sounds, but they're not doing it consciously, so you can't call it phonological awareness. Well, Michael Goldstein, who at Cornell University has spent a lot of time studying babies babbling, differs with that. He found in a research project that he did that babies are very intentional and conscious in terms of how they're manipulating and moving sounds around. This was in a study that he did where he was checking to see which babies learned to coo and babble with the most sounds. The ones whose parents coo and babble back to them or the ones whose parents simply talk to them. And of course it turned out that if parents reinforce cooing and babbling by cooing and babbling to their babies, they'll learn sounds faster. But what he also discovered in his research was that babies use babbling to get mom's attention. And if the baby produces a new combination of sounds, mom hears the novelty, turns to look to see what the baby's doing, and gives the baby attention. But if the baby keeps producing the same combination of sounds over and over and over again, mom will stop paying attention. So what the babies in his study did is as soon as they lost mom's attention, they began to consciously experiment with their sounds to see what new combination of sounds they could come up with to gain mom's attention. So babies are very consciously doing this. Now, the perception of blending is that blending is hard. I taught 10 years of first grade before I taught kindergarten. And many of my first graders really struggled with blending. So I thought it was hard, but I was teaching it the way that we have been trained to teach it in our traditional phonics programs. When I went to kindergarten, I began looking at that natural sequence of language development and studying how babies produce those sounds. This is a quote that demonstrates that our current methods of teaching blending and teaching phonological awareness have not been very successful. This was a study done of No Child Left Behind in 2007. So after seven years of No Child Left Behind, they looked to see what the results were, and here's what they discovered. Early reading first had a positive effect on children's print and letter knowledge. So basically, they could name letters better than before. But the program had no impact on phonological awareness, which includes rhyming and oral language, or vocabulary development, which is a part of listening comprehension. So we've talked about the two critical elements that we need to be successful with if children are going to go past that fourth grade slump are word recognition and the foundation of word recognition is phonological awareness and listening comprehension, which includes vocabulary. And the study shows that the money spent on No Child Left Behind didn't do either one. They go on to tell us that we know with considerable confidence that adults with reading disabilities share the deficits in phonological awareness that have been identified in children. So if we don't teach phonological awareness early and teach it well, children can struggle for the rest of their lives. So here are all, here's a chart of all of the consonant sounds that we will be teaching in animated literacy. We're going to go back to Frere Jaca to play with these sounds. So when I introduce a character, Baby Barnaby has a complete story with all of the elements of storytelling, with silliness and rhyme and alliteration, so we repeat the sounds. He has a song to come back with gestures and a finger play to reinforce that story. But the most important thing to come out of that story is the gesture and the sound, and it has nothing to do with the letter in the initial stages. So here's baby Barnaby bowing, and so you bow and you go, buh. Or you could bounce instead and go, buh. Or you could balance on one foot and go, buh. So you could give children choices of how they want to gesture that sound, but they all need to produce it. But as soon as we have produced it in isolation, we need to immediately move to blending with that sound. So we go to the song for Frere Jaca. And now we sing it this way. Everybody show me bowing. Are you bowing? Are you bowing? Baby Barnaby, baby Barnaby. Barnaby's bells are saying, Barnaby's bells are saying, bing bong, bing, 
bing bong bing so notice there where if this had been a vowel sound i would have isolated it and i would have gone b b b but because it's a consonant we're going to treat it the way babies do when they babble and we're going to blend with it so we're going to take the ing the ding dong ding remove the initial consonant or the onset replace it with the character sound blend it together to get bing bong bing when I started teaching it this way, my children had no trouble with blending because we were doing it in a natural way. And as we talked about with Marion Diamond, the thing that grows the brain the best is natural learning. And that's what's taking place here. So then we move on to Crazy Camel. And Crazy Camel's sound is k for catching. So here she is catching cookies and cakes and candies in her story. And then we can sing her song with it. And then when we put it together with Frere Jaca, it's going to sound like this. Are you catching? Are you catching? Crazy camel, crazy camel. Crazy spells are saying, crazy spells are saying, King Kong, King, King Kong, King. So now we've blended with that. Now we can go back to Baby Barnaby. What were his bell sounds? Bing, bong, bing. Now we've got Daisy Dragon. And here's Daisy Dragon, and she's dancing at the Dragonville Dairy. And if she does a, a difficult and daring enough dance, she may get a dish of Date Delight ice cream as a reward. So think of dancing. You can wiggle your hands up over your head, or at one of my workshops, teachers showed me dancing this way. So however you want to gesture dancing, now we're going to put that into the context of Daisy Dragon's verse. And this time though, instead of using bells, we're going to change to a cat. Now what I tend to do in my classroom is stay for about one or two weeks with just doing bell tones. Then as my kids get to be, become more and more automatic and, and rapid, at substituting those sounds with bells, we'll move on to other sounds so that we don't just play with the onset, but we can also play with the rhyme. So that's what we're doing here. So now we've got, are you dancing, are you dancing, Daisy Dragon, Daisy Dragon, Daisy's cats are saying. Now a cat would say meow, but if we take away the mm from meow, replace it with our duh, what do we have? Deow. We've got Daisy's cats are saying, Daisy's cats are saying, diow, 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 diow. What would Barnaby's cat say? Biow, biow, biow. What would Crazy Camel's cat say? Kiow, kiow, kiow. Okay, so now we have ways of making this more challenging so that that brain continues to grow more and more complex, larger and heavier. So now we're going to do Farley Fox. Now Farley Fox's story has him fishing with his, with his back feet and playing the fiddle with his front feet. So here he is fiddling and here he is fishing. So children could choose to fiddle as a gesture for his sound or to fish as a gesture. So now his verse would sound like this. And in his verse, I changed it from cats to change to bees. Now a bee goes buzz buzz. So if we take the buh away from buzz buzz and replace it with Farley, what are his bees gonna say? Fuzz, fuzz. So we've got, are you fishing? Are you fishing? Farley fox, Farley fox. Farley's bees are saying, Farley's bees are saying, fuzz, 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 fuzz. What would Crazy Camel's bee say? Cuz, cuz, cuz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Does, does, does. So we can go back very quickly and review those. And I tend to introduce about six to eight per session in the context of Frere Jaca. So now we're gonna move on to the sound for Gilda Goose. Now Gilda Goose likes to glide. So here we are gliding and going G. So for her verse, um, let's go ahead and use our Bs again. So are you gliding are you gliding gilda goose gilda goose gilda's bees are saying gilda's bees are saying guzz 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 what would daisy's bees do does 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 fuzz 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 so now we can start to pull out objects and use those along with our lesson so for our next one Let's say, 
we have a snake and our snake is going slither slither so now we can bring in hippie hippo and here's hippie hippo and he's humming hot air into his harmonica so what would his snakes say hither 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 what would farley fox's snake say fither 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 kither 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 bither 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 now we have jenny jaguar and here's jenny jaguar and she's juggling so her sound is j for juggling so we could sing are you juggling are you juggling jenny jaguar jenny jaguar jenny's snakes are saying jenny's snakes are saying jither 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 here we have Kimmy Kangaroo, and Kimmy Kangaroo is the keeper at the Kennedy's Petting Corral at the Kennedy Zoo, and she puts on a show for the kids by flying kites up into the air, playing a kazoo, kicking balls high into the sky, and then she blows a kiss to each kid as they go home and leave the petting corral. So put your hand up to your mouth and go, K for blowing kisses. So now if we put our snake into her song, it's going to be, are you blowing kisses? Are you blowing kisses? Kimmy kangaroo, Kimmy kangaroo, Kimmy snakes are saying, Kimmy snakes are saying, kither, 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 bither, 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 gither, 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 dither, dither, dither. And remember to keep your kids gesturing as you're doing this because it's the gestures that get into that unconscious muscle memory system so that you don't have to think about sounds when you're reading. Here's Lizzie Lamb, and she's laying on a nice soft pillow of lemon leaves, and she doesn't know that Lonnie Lyon is back there behind her licking his lips, thinking he's going to have a luscious lunch. Well, fortunately, Lonnie laughs, wakes Lizzie up, and she lumbers away, not knowing that she almost became Lonnie Lyon's lunch. So when we think of Lizzie Lamb, we lay our head on a nice soft pillow of lemon leaves and go, Ooh. So if we were using a shark, and a shark might go chomp, chomp, chomp. Hers would be like this. Are you laying on lemon leaves? Are you laying on lemon leaves? Lizzie Lamb, Lizzie Lamb. Lizzie sharks are saying, Lizzie sharks are saying, lomp, lomp, lomp. Or if our shark was going bite, bite, what would her shark do? He would go light, light, light. Here's Mimi Mermaid. And Mimi Mermaid has a magic mop. And there are, she has these minnow friends that like to swim around to the, to the music of her merry mandolin. But there's these monsters that live up on the mountains. And when they come marching down to munch her minnow, she gets out her magic mop, moves it back and forth and goes, mmm, and the mighty monsters melt into harmless mice and scamper back up the mountain. So when we think of Mimi Mermaid, move your magic mop and go, mmm. Now we need to blend with it. So we're going, are you moving a magic mop? Are you moving a magic mop? Me, me, mermaid, me, me, mermaid. Mimi's snakes are saying, Mimi snakes are saying, mither, 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 mither. Mimi sharks are saying, mump, 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 mump. Here's Nellie Newt. Now Nellie Newt lives in a nest of napkins and noodles where she hides um, nuts and noodles to nibble at night when she should be sleeping. So when we think of Nellie Newt, we wiggle our fingers in front of our mouth, think of something delicious we like to nibble, and go, hmm. So let's say Nellie Newt has a fish, and her fish is going bubble, 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 as it's blowing bubbles up. Um, what would Nellie Newt's fish be going? Nubble, nubble, nubble. So now we've got, are you nibbling, are you nibbling, Nelly Newt, Nelly Newt, Nelly's fish is saying, Nelly's fish is saying, nubble, 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 nubble. Now we could go back through and review our others. What's Daisy Dragon's fish saying? Double, 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 gobble, 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 hubble, 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 fubble, fubble, fubble. So again, because this is natural, we're doing it in a way that is similar to babbling, and all of our kids have babbled if they're speaking words, we know that they can be successful in this activity. So here's Polly Panda, and Polly Panda loves to paint with her favorite colors of pink and purple. 
So put your paintbrush up in the air, put your paper in front of you, and paint like this and go, P are you painting, are you painting, Polly Panda, Polly Panda, Polly's snake is saying, Polly's snake is saying, instead of slither, slither, pibble, pither, 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 pither. Here's Quentin Quail, and Quentin Quail is a quarterback. So we're going to reach back with our football and throw a quick pass. And as we're throwing it, we're going to go Qua, for quarterbacking. And so if we were holding up a, pic, uh, a puppy dog and the puppy dog's going woof, woof, what would Quentin Quail's dog do? He'd go quoof, quoof. Here's Rosie Raccoon. Rosie Raccoon rides Rhino Ralph in the rodeo. She ropes Rhino Ralph. So you could show me riding, or you can show me roping, or you can rope and ride at the same time. Let's say we have her cat now. Are you roping and riding, Rosie Raccoon? Rosie's cats are saying, Rosie's cats are saying, reow, 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 reow. Here's Sadie Seal, and her gesture is surfing. So you can body surf down a wave like this. You can surf on a surfboard like this. You could swim in front of the wave like this. So you can choose any of those and, sh and go for surfing. So now we need to blend with it because it's a consonant. So we put it into our song. And what was Sadie Seal's cat say? Seow, 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 seow. Here's Timmy Tiger. And Timmy Tiger likes to tickle. So, um, and here he is tickling terrible Tommy T-Rex's tummy. So wiggle your fingers in front of your tummy and go and so his verse, if we were using a fish, let's say this time our fish goes glub glub as it's going through the water. So Timmy's fish would do what? Tub tub. Are you tickling Timmy tiger? Timmy's fish is saying, Timmy's fish is saying, tub tub tub, sub sub sub, rub rub rub. So you can keep going back and applying all of those other sounds. Here's Vinnie Vulture. And Vinnie Vulture likes to play hide-and-seek by taking his vulture wings, pulling them over his head like this, and vanishing behind them. So we think of vanishing as we think of Vinnie Vulture. And if we are using our cat, what would his cat say? Instead of meow, it would go veow. And here's Winky Walrus. Winky is at the well, and he's washing his whiskers, and he's wishing for wiggly worms. So you can either wish like this, you can wash like this, and what would his bees say? Instead of buzz, buzz, they'd go was, was. Here's Felix and Max, and Felix Fox likes to relax by playing the sax. Max, the ox, likes to relax by boxing. So in order for Max to box and not hit a, a living creature, um, Felix Fox rolls up socks into little balls, tosses them up in the air so that Max can box the socks. And when he gets tired of boxing, Felix can go back to relaxing by playing his sax. So when we think of X, we think of relaxing. Put your hands up in the air as high as you can reach. Take in a deep breath and relax by exhaling and going Ks. Now this one, you can't use at the beginning of a word, you have to use at the end. So repla we replace the NG in ding dong ding, and we can go mix mox, mix rix rocks, rix fix fox, fix yix yox yix, which brings us to our next sound, which is yakety yak. And yakety yak is a, is a professional yo-yo yanker. So take your finger like this, pretend like you have a yo-yo on the end of it, yank it up and go y yeah, for yanking. So if we have the cats, they're going to go yee-ow instead of meow. The bees are going to go yuz yuz instead of buzz buzz. And here we have Zachary and Zena, and their zookeeper named Zeke. And sometimes when things are calm at the zoo, Zeke opens up the gates and lets Zachary and Zena go zigzagging through the streets of Zang's Zoom so that they can bring back a parade of people to the zoo to buy tickets to pay for their food. So whenever we think of Zachary and Zena, we can think of zigzagging and go z, of zipping and go z. And now their bees would go zuz, zuz, zuz. Here's Chauncey Chipmunk. And Chauncey makes up chewy, cheesy chocolate chowder for all of his chipmunk chums. And he has to chop up that chowder. 
So take your axe in both hands, go diagonally across your body and go Ch for chopping. And his bees are going to go chuzz, chuzz, chuzz. His bells will go ching, chong, ching. And his puppies instead of woof, woof, woof will go chuff, chuff, chuff. Here's Sheriff Shadrach. And Sheriff Shadrach has a funny way of getting ready to go out to work each day. He gets into the shower where he shaves, he shampoos his hair, and he shines his sheriff's shoes, and then goes off into his patrolling with his pet sheep. So whenever we think of Sheriff Shadrach, you can shave, you can shampoo, you can shine shoes and go shh. So his bees are going shuzz shuzz, his bells are going shing shong, and his cats are going chiao chiao chiao. Here's the thick thorny thing, and he's very thirsty. So take hold of your throat like this and go by sticking out your tongue like a hot, thirsty puppy dog. And when he's really thirsty, he takes a thimble, throws it up at the clouds. Here's a thud of thunder, and then the rain comes down. He can catch the rain in his thimble, drink the rain, and he's not thirsty anymore. Here's WH. Now, WH can, you can tell the kids it's the same sound as Winky Walrus's W sound. It's close enough, even though I know technically it's slightly different. But we have some kids who say whistle with the W sound. Others say whistle with the WH sound, and it doesn't make a difference in comprehension. So if you want to teach this character um, as a separate character, you can put your whistle up to your mouth, blow your air through it, and go and then make Winky Walrus sound and go, Whoa. but be careful because when you do that, a lot of kids will confuse it with Q. So here he is whirling around in a whirlpool doing wheelies in his wheelbarrow. And finally, we have NG for ping pong, and he's ringing his gong and going, ng. and we do so much with sing song, sing and bing bong, bing and ring, rong, ring, you can simply connect it to there. And the kids pick up that sound very simply. So those are all of our consonant sounds. In our next segment, I'm going to take you through a whole variety of songs and activities that you can use for teaching kids how to recognize and produce their vowel sounds and blend with their consonant sounds. So thank you for joining me. Hope to see you in the next session.